Welcome to the Zoomer. I'm Marissa Lennox. In most countries, the debate over medical assistance in dying, or MAID, has centered on adults in the final stages of an incurable disease. This was the case when Canada first passed its set of rules governing MAID in 2016. But a 2019 charter challenge upped the ante, striking down the requirement that natural death be reasonably foreseeable. In 2021, the MAID law was expanded to individuals not near death. This legislation also opened the door to MAID for people whose sole condition is mental illness, a provision set to become legal in March of 2024. And just last month, a parliamentary committee report recommended, among 23 proposed changes, that Ottawa move to allow Canadians to make advanced directives for assisted death for when they can no longer legally give consent and extend eligibility to Canadians under the age of 18. If passed, Canada would become one of the most liberal countries in the world when it comes to MAID. There's lots to talk about. Let's bring in the panel. Good to have you all here for what is sure to be a difficult discussion. And Ron, I'll begin with you. On advanced directives, you are not only an advocate for advanced directives, you are also a patient who has been diagnosed with dementia. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. And I'm seven years since diagnosis of, of uh, dementia. Why would advanced directives help your situation? Oh, it helped considerably. The, the thing that makes the difference for people with dementia is that when the law was first put out, it was essentially impossible for a person with dementia to get made because we had this condition that just as made was to be administered just before the needle was inserted in your arm, the provider had to ask you, do you still consent? That's right. Now, unfortunately, the condition of dementia, or in my case, Alzheimer's, is that my mind is steadily and gradually diminishing. It's going. And I could, but just waiting, until I want made could put me in the position where I can't do provide a final consent. Dr. Koch, you come at this from a different angle, not only as a gerontologist and a medical ethicist, but also once a carer to a parent with dementia. Yeah, well, with a type of dementia. Dementia covers many things. Ron told me before that this is the next logical step from where we've been with the law. And yes, if you're really running down a slope to a cliff, the next logical step will carry you over. I think the sensible step is to take a step back. The issues of advanced directive are much more complex than just what I want when I want it. And the fact that we change at each point, the folks from Death with Dignity will tell you that this is about Death with Dignity, but we know their history going back to Anne and Derek Humphrey and going back to basically the fact that when the only thing you have is medical termination, we don't look to the things which can make life better. And I'm for basically assuring that we have what we need to live the best life we can with whatever limits we have, rather than making death the first and the easy and the clearly logical option. We will get into some of the ethical conversations in just a moment, but I do want to hear from everyone at the table first. And Helen, one thing that happened in 2021, though, and the made law was expanded, is it allowed for something called a waiver of final consent, which, as I understand, for somebody who has been assessed and approved for made, it gives them the ability to give consent in advance when they reach the point. So say somebody with dementia. How is that different from an advanced directive? Yeah, so the waiver of final consent basically allows you when you're assessed, approved, and you've set a date for made to work with your clinician in a written agreement to sign off on consent in advance so that when the clinician comes to do the MAID procedure, if you've lost capacity between entering the agreement and the day of your procedure, they're still able to go ahead with that MAID death. And it gives some patients with dementia, I mean, I think just to clarify uh, from Ron's comments, some patients with dementia are able to qualify for MAID. Some are able to use the waiver of final consent. Um, some, unfortunately, have to choose to go early because of their fears and concerns. And that's where we get to adding an advanced request. And what Ron talked about, uh, we call it an advanced request just to differentiate from the advanced directive that currently exists for healthcare. But that's where you would now have the option to determine now what would you, you would like to see down the road. 
to Alan's point, there is an advanced directive that does currently exist for healthcare. You can specify in advance, no DNR, no feeding tube, no antibiotics, but you can't ask for active intervention in death. Why is one more controversial than the other in your perspective? Because one involves killing the patient and that is a final act uh, and uh, that leaves no other possibilities available. So the ethical magnitude uh, of, that of that directive is much greater. Most advanced directives, depending a little bit on who gives it and where and what for, are generally seen as guidance for, but not absolute requirements to enact what the person has said. So the difference that's being asked for here is an absolute guidance, even if myself, as I then become, no longer wants to be put to death, uh, even though my competent self did X period of time before, that current refusal to, to die gets overridden by your prior consent. And that's where it becomes very difficult indeed um, and very ethically complex. All right, hold that thought. We'll continue this discussion on what's being proposed and the ethical dilemmas therein next.